Our next guest um, is uh, somebody who's really special to me. When Luke and I were in the very beginning stages of just thinking about sovereigns together with Andre Mann, we reached out to Ron knowing that he was a hero in the space of faith-driven investing, that he had been for decades before then, helped Christ followers understand how to be thoughtful about seeking God's wisdom as they look to plan and invest. And so uh, Ron has been a friend over the course of the last 10 years now. He's been a great encouragement to us in the movement. And we are doing our first ever Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, one of the key things about this movement is that we're standing on the shoulders of lots of people. As Ruben talked about in his talk, Christ followers have been investing intentionally for hundreds of years. And that continues to pick up. And when I think about a modern day leader and hero of this space, it's Ron Blue. So really pleased to be able to, to announce the fact that we are collectively as a movement uh, giving some money, investing some money in what Ron Blue is doing through his institute as he trains up the next generation of financial advisors. And so for the first ever Lifetime Achievement Award from Faith Driven Investor, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Blue. First of all, I want to just say thank you for giving me this honor of an Achievement Award, um, a Lifetime Achievement Award, and you know and I know that apart from God's grace, nothing could have been accomplished. And often, often I pray and say, Lord, I don't know why you chose me to be used in this particular way, but you did, and help me to be faithful to what it is that you've called me to do. And I, without question, was called and I was called to leave the business world, I thought, and enter the ministry world, and I was called to help Christians plan and manage their money so that they would have more money to give away. I'd been to Africa, and I saw the third world. I'd been in America, of course, and I'd seen the affluence that we experienced. I'd worked on Wall Street. And what I wanted to do was to help Christians do what they wanted to do, and that was to increase their generosity. The first client that I had, I was able to help uh, develop a plan to give away a million dollars. And I've often thought that had he not wanted to give a million dollars, my standard might have been much, much lower. And that was in 1980. And what I'd like to do is just take a quick look at 1980 compared to 2020. And in 1980, when I started Ronald Blue and Company, uh, there was no financial planning industry. There, uh, the only investment vehicles were typically stocks and bonds. Uh, mutual funds were really out of favor. Uh, you had precious metals and certain other asset classes, oil and gas and so forth. But we had 70% tax rates and we had uh, close to hyperinflation. So because of those two things, inflation and tax, most of the investments that were being presented dealt with inflation and or tax. It also was the time of a tremendous number of tax shelters, which turned out to be uh, really uh, bad investments, if you will. Uh, and uh, no financial planning industry at all. Um, and I didn't know anything other than how to build a time-based business. And so I became a fee-only financial planner just because that's the only way I knew how to build a business. And God honored that and put me in front of a, a lot of major donor groups. And over time, we built a, a significant practice of, of helping Christians plan and manage their money. And I came to the conclusion after several years that those who manage their financial life according to biblical wisdom and principles, they will experience contentment under all economic conditions. They will experience confidence in their financial decisions because they're following principles, and they will experience excellent communication at all levels, resulting in maximized generosity of time, talents, and treasure. Now, if we move forward and we now have uh, thousands of uh, advisors who have their certified kingdom advisor designation but the big news is we have got tremendous number of really high quality investment experts back in 1980 we didn't have hardly anybody in the christian world who knew much about investments and those who did i hate to say were really 
charlatans in many, many cases. I help an awful lot of people get out of bankruptcy situations because Christian advisors had put them in the wrong investments. We've got a tremendous number of really high quality uh, investment experts now. And that, along with the development of the financial planning, Christian financial planning industry, is what is the big, big change. And I think what it says is this. There is an opportunity right now to show the world that God's word is relevant and it's really pretty simple to understand. And the way that it works is this. If I take the best of financial literacy, the Wall Street Journal, let's say, and I look at that and I say, well, this is good stuff, but it's two weeks old. Well, I can take this, and this is good stuff, and it's 3,000 years old. This one will never change. This one changes every day. And what I need to do as a Christian financial advisor is basically take the best of financial knowledge, put it inside God's Word, and give advice that is wisdom-driven. So what has changed is that we have an irrefutable, credible industry that has developed. And we are irrefutable professionally with the thousands of uh, advisors, yourselves included, who are giving advice from a biblical basis, but it's also the best of the professional world. It's irrefutable from an academic basis. We're in multiple colleges where we're teaching and, and researching uh, biblical financial wisdom. And it's irrefutable from a theological standpoint. We're in seminaries also. So we're standing at a time when the world is experiencing terrific wealth and we have the answer as to how to think about that wealth and how to make decisions relative to that wealth. And you've got the opportunity to do that. My challenge is this. We're going to give you a tool that is a framework for biblical thinking and biblical financial decision making. And here's my challenge. Are you called? And are you make sure you know what your calling is? And secondly, what's your mission? All, all the businesses that I've been involved in developing have been mission driven. They started with a mission and then the business developed to accomplish the mission. So I pray that God will hold you true to his word and that he will increase your truth, he will increase your humility, and he will increase your obedience, and that you will impact this world for Jesus Christ. The world has never seen a culture like this, and we have an opportunity to speak into the wealthiest culture that has ever existed and say, God's word works under all circumstances, for everybody, for all time.